when we're looking at the opportunist role, we're talking about the fourth lines, four, six, and four, one. Now these are two very different profiles because their public roles, even though that's the same, we can see that the body is as far away from each other on the scale of lower to upper as you can get. And yet, we think about what is happening with the six, it's reaching to the next one, right? So the six being a transitional uh, line quality, or a tra we can talk about it being a transitional body while well, it's reaching towards the next one and of the next hexagram. It's a very interesting dynamic that we have here, a very different aspect of what it is to be human. So Ra says that this fourth line is one of the most complex roles, and the reason for that is because when we're looking at the upper trigram, we're looking at aspects of what it is to be transpersonal, and in a sense, it's the only friendly familiarity um, externalization line to one's network because if we look at the five, now you're looking at strangers. And in the lower trigram, we're looking at one, two, and three, right here is where we have the binary shift field, according to Raw, between three and four. And so three is, you can see it's yin, so it's, it's more malleable, it has more capability of handling change, but the four is yang, it's much more fixed, and it's transpersonal focus, so it's reaching across what's on the other side of that channel construct. That's one of the things that's always looking for, is what's on the other side, right? So, fourth line people, they have the foundation for transpersonal relationships, and everything about what their mental focus is going to be on is who to invest one's time or energy, or even what, what to invest one's time, energy, money, resources. They're always looking for what is that way to reach the other side. That's what the fourth line is doing. So when you look at the fifth line quality, the stranger and universality, or universalization, we're looking at a very different process. If we recall from Rave ABCs, we saw that the fourth line was right before five, and five is the end of the uniqueness of that hexagram. So we're talking about now the projection field, and that's not what we're looking at with four, obviously, because four is so very different from five. But then when we look at the six, Ah, we have a four, six profile. That six line quality, so on the body side, it'll be selfishness and a kind of perfected aloofness. So selfishness in the respect that it really is part of their own process. When you're looking at uh, human species, the last 400 years, you know, we were in the cross of planning and now we're shifting from first line quality to six line quality. So we're entering into an era where this perfected aloofness or don't bother me, I'm busy, I'm doing my own thing, I'm because I have to be my own role model or my own authority. It's a realm where we're passing on the torch, if you will, from one to six. And so if you're looking at, these are all the quote unquote transpersonal because they're upper trigram. If we're looking at these, the only truly uh, capability for the social quality is the four, because fives are like <laughs> hiding behind closed doors, you know, peeking through the blinds. Six are like not detached, unattached, hypocrite or not, um, objective, role model, you know, they kind of stand alone a bit because they're a transitionary or a transitional uh, line quality. So then the four, the only truly transpersonal and social quality that's it. So that means we only have four ones and four sixes relative to the conscious personality being transpersonal. The friends, the familiars, the network, kindness, meanness, all those things that you know about re with regards to the four. So here's the dilemma. A four is very fixed, right? If we think about what, I think it's the 43.4, it's one track mind. 
Yeah. So remember, when you want to understand any line quality, just go look at all the Ray of I Ching line qualities and read those for a while, and you'll start to see how this fixedness in the fourth line quality has uh, a rigidity, is another word, uh, and an inability to bend. And this is especially true when you're looking at the four one. They're very strong. However, in order to maintain that strength, they have to maintain their fixedness because they are the bridge that holds together personal destiny and transpersonal um, karma profiles together. That four one in the middle, right? The fixed fate. So for a fourth line, life is going to be focused on the social dynamic. Through this social dynamic, they are going to be able to fulfill their purpose. So you as a four, it's really deeply significant according to Ra that you are only going to be able to uh, have that s fulfillment through the social dynamic in order to fulfill whatever your life's work is, right? Your incarnation cross and your life purpose fulfillment is part of this. So he says, quote, the thing to recognize about role is that it is through your role that you accomplish what is your potential. So the role sets the frame. And the moment we're looking at this opportunistic role, we have a frame that says that what I am going to be is going to be dependent on who I relate to, who I am connected to. It is out of those beings that all the opportunities in my life are going to come. So this leads us to the fundamental dilemma that's happening between a four and a six. If we're looking at the four, six role model, yeah, opportunist role model, then what we're looking at is this tripartite life process where in the very first part of the life before the Saturn return, we have this trial and error process. So the process of a role model becoming the archetype of what it is to be themselves goes through that three-part or tripartite life process. And so in the beginning, mistakes, then we have on the roof, then we have role model. And if we take a look at what four and three are back to what we looked at last week and what we know, that binary shift field, they're just so very different from each other as far as what it is to be three versus four. So in the first part of the life, as the opportunist lives out the physical mistakes on the physical plane, this is the dilemma that those mistakes are about who they relate to. So the body getting into encounters with failed marriages, failed business opportunities, failed partnerships of any kind, friendship, whatever, things failed as in they do not maintain necessarily. Yeah, there's going to be this bonds made and broken theme where the, and you as a parent, you look at that four, six and you go, gosh, I wish I could protect you from that experience. However, I know you have to learn from your own experience what to do. But the four, six is going to get into an engagement of a relational dynamic to others. It's a four, three, in other words, in the first 30 years. So they live out the three dynamic, not that they are physically a three. They don't have the same kind of capability of dealing with the hard knocks that the other third qualities who are true third um, line aspect or public roles. So the trial and error, the make your mistakes process is not something that they're built to handle. So for the four, making mistakes with the relationships this can be absolutely devastating in the first part of their lives because remember what the four is, fixed, not designed to be flexible or bend. You try to bend them too far when you get to the four one, they can break. So what you're looking at with mistakes for the opportunist, they can suffer from the lack of the ability to cognitively discern who to invest in. So remember if we talk about the relational dynamic of a being to its body. Remember the witness consciousness to the form. If the form is not operating in alignment because the mind is all distorted and you're making mental decisions, so not treating your body correctly, not being able to trust your own self as 
on the path of be developing your capability of becoming the archetypal role model of yourself that you were designed to be, what happens is, is that you cannot have the cognitive, unique, differentiated potential because something's off, whatever it happens to be, something's off, not right place, not right time, whatever the case may be. The reason of not allowing one to operate in integrity from the experiential plane of living the body, which is the vehicle, which is the life that one is living. So fourth line beings suffer from not being able to cognitively discern who they are here to invest in. Remember, everything's going to come to them through their opportunities. And what happens is the return of the investment isn't correct either if they're trying to invest their energy this particular person in marriage or that particular career or job or company or whatever the case may be and this is the unfortunate thing is because if they don't have a way to trust their own decision making process that can lead them to when they get to their roof phase not having the kind of capability of resolving or healing or um, coming back from those wounds that they maybe carry into their later years. So it's not a one-way street when it comes to that lack of cognitively discerning. When they're able to give of their externalization potential to an other, if they're not able to follow their decision-making strategy or honor themselves as their own authority process, then that cognitive, not only the discernment of who is the right other, but the ability to externalize to the right other is not there. So it's like this um, social dynamic, which is the value of what a four is, right? You think about a four and it's networking. So the four is not only here to network, but it's also here to build a network, generators, advise the network, projectors, initiate networks, manifestors, and then the evaluators to be able, sorry, reflectors, be able to reflect upon the social networks or dynamics of which it is a part, however it is correct for it to do so. So they're always looking for something, fours are. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, kind of a thing. So we think about four and we think about the um, communal barns that can happen there within the community, as an example, especially if you see somebody with a lot of tribal activations. They're looking for maybe something specific or not. They might not know, might just keep that, that favor that they did in their back pocket so that they're building up especially trust. Six lines are really looking for what is trustworthy, who is trustworthy. So if one gets back a return on their investment of time, energy, money, opportunities, connections, friends, whatever the case may be, they're looking for something in return. And if it's the wrong person, it might not be a specific thing, but if it's the wrong person, then they definitely don't get paid back for their time, energy, money, attention, investment, you see. So when it comes to a four, wherever you find four, four is where you have the capability of externalizing in order to influence, in order to gain something back from the other. And that is something, and you see the mistakes right there in the first 30 years of one's life. So to succeed as an opportunist or to be satisfied, to be peaceful, to be surprised, you have to know who to befriend because the four is always based upon friends, right? Brotherhood, sisterhood, the one with whom you open up to like a friend would in order to build your support structure or your network empowerment, sharing whatever it is. And when we look at this kind of process, if it's the not self mind that is deciding, oh, I'm going to befriend that one because if I rub shoulders with them, I'm going to prove who I am, my value and worth, that kind of thing. If you have that kind of um, construct, mental, remember, it's always going to be locked away from cognitive intelligence if somebody is not making decisions in alignment with or accordance with how they're here to be correct. 
what happens is they won't have the resources, mental resources, to be able to discern or tell which person is actually going to be a really good return on the investment. So if you invest your energy over a year or two and it's break the bond, walk away with that person because what to do, it is what it is, life happens, not a big deal. But if you spend 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years investing in a friendship and you get to the age of 50, okay, and you get, get to that Chiron return and instead of operating in alignment, you've been operating out of integrity and that network breaks or that um, return on investment, let's say it's in a romantic partnership because those kinds of things can last that long, 50 years, and now we have that experience of not having the return on investment. You spent your entire life supporting the other person's career, and now we don't have the, ex the releasing expectations. It's always a good thing to do, but we don't have the return on or the giving back of what you gave. That can be devastating to somebody can be really devastating to somebody's life and all of the things that you thought that you would get from committing oneself to the other in such a way. So most fours are always being drained by maintaining relationships that are actually not correct for them or they're not functional. Putting, let's say, 10 years into somebody, giving them everything on the career side and not having them stick around, having them go off and create their own business when you consider them a partner. That is another uh, example of what can happen when the four does not invest their energy in the right person. And then that's a relationship that's not going to bring the kind of level of opportunity because it wasn't the right relationship in the first place. And that's really devastating to some people to careers, to businesses, to families, it really is. So remember, role model, selfishness, that's just a dropped S there, I'll fix it before I send it back to you. It is, sorry, transpersonal in terms of the way in which it attracts the social dimension. So according to Ra, he says, keynote, selfishness is something that needs to be grasped about the six because we see it as a transpersonal phenomena, upper trigram in that sense, and transpersonal, but not out of itself. It is transpersonal in terms of the way that it attracts the social dimension to it. Very different than the four that actively seeks it. So the ideal of the six is that it's absorbed in just being itself, just being itself. And you're looking at people who are designed to have a kind of authoritative process where people look to them as leaders because they develop into something that or someone that knows what can be trusted is trustworthy and this basis of trust as a four six when you as an example have done this the expectation field of the other on a five is very strong so if you quote unquote break the trust of that four six where they invested this time, energy, money in you, and they expected something in return. They didn't get back the friendship that they wanted, or they thought they wanted. Lavina's version of friendship is very different than what a four friendship is. Then they will never trust you again if that trust is broken from experience. So the success of the role model depends upon how self-contained they are, which is a very different thing. Remember aloof, to, be to develop their objectivity. And the ideal for any role model, of course, is to come to a sense of their own personal authority that is the gift of this knowledge. There is a need for nothing, Buddha, Bodhisattva, right? Line quality, archetypal nature. But a readiness for anything when it comes to being a six on the body side. And if you think about how in just a couple more years, we are going to be moving into that new era, that new age, 
where the background frequency shift is going from one to six, you're now looking at the entire planet being conditioned by that background frequency to have this kind of inherent, you could say selfishness. I like how Ross reframes it as enlightened selfishness because it is about being recognized as being your own role model of yourself, not for anybody else, but for yourself. And that selfishness doesn't have to um, be taken negatively, but it is just simply being and out of that being. It's not a bad thing to say to somebody in human design. We know this. It's not. There are certain aspects of selfishness within the design, period. And six is where you find one of those. So if you cannot be absorbed in being oneself, in your own process, in your own response, success for, uh, of being yourself for others, um, the awareness potential of your personal process, um, being there on the border place of being able to attune to what's next or what's to come, yeah? Um, surprised by such a thing, or in peace because you can just embody that as a being that you are yourself and that you don't have to look to anybody else for guidance, you know? You can be fully in love with yourself because you are yourself and in that you are completely self-contained, according to Ra. So the thing about the role model is that the ideal is there, there's a need for nothing again, but a readiness for anything. And in this opportunity to be the role model of yourself, this opportunistic role model that comes out of being who, the very, very specific way that they are here to be fulfilled as themselves, to be who they are for themselves, for others, in peace of impact and so forth. Surprise, as far as the reflective nature of what it is to be oneself. Then out of that influence, opportunistic role model, comes the kind of um, visibility to the other. We're, we're all use the term impact here. And generally we use the term impact for manifested or fifth line quality. This is a different kind of impact in that the visibility rises. Because what is the six? Fool on the hill, somebody can look up and see that and just expect that person can be trusted and they know what they're doing and they know where they're going because they emanate that when it comes to the fullest fulfillment of the embodiment of what it is to be them. Because they are six, they are seen, they're up there. You know, other people can look at them and say, oh, leader, we can trust that one, or not, right? The specific line activations that talk about hypocr hypocrisy, 10.6 in detriment, or I think it's 31.6 in detriment that says, do as I say, not as I do kind of a thing, yeah? telling um, other people what to do, not because it is something that you're taking away their authoritative process, but as an outer authority, and we can all do this, as an outer authority, we can visibly give our unique differentiated perspective to that other if it's right for us to, um, my mind is saying merge or be aware of the other in this process. Remember the tuning of this role is to the color theme, and we're gonna go look at that. So 10.6 detriment, aha, uh -huh, do as I say, not as I do. And that resonates across to all sixes in detriment, okay? So it's a different way that it's phrased in the 31.6. Julie wrote it to me recently in class. So first we're gonna take a look at the ones underneath the four and the six. And from this perspective, we're looking at Color one, which is teacher, and role model, color one is also teacher. When you're looking at this, the one, as usual, must become student first, so must learn first. This is a mind that can dig into things, that has the basic authoritarianism underneath that opportunistic process. So the whole theme of the teacher is always about expressing outer authority to another as an authority on something, yeah, an expert, having some kind of expertise within that network, 
Yeah, that visibility of seeing, oh, my friend really knows her stuff when it comes to this or that. So to have that solid foundation of learning underneath this opportunistic mind, the teacher is the expression of authority who knows what they're talking about because they've gone into and delved into the depths of the learning and um, dug in and discovered what, you know, where is that bottom? What is solid and what is trust? worthy when it comes to whatever body of knowledge or situational context that they are studying. So if you have a teacher, as an example, who seems unsure about what they're saying, you're not going to trust them for very long, right? Because if they're always questioning their self and they're always like, mm, I don't know, then you don't have a solid foundation yet from this teacher. Remember, when they're not operating in alignment, no access to color. They become a needy teacher. Who likes a needy teacher? I need you, you know, to uh, validate this for me or, um, you know, go off and do it yourself. You know, that, that's not, the, the four is more engaged with friendly, familiar, externalizing, networking, and then that one underneath digging and finding, here, I found something solid for you. Here, this is the thing, my friend, that you can trust because I have the authority, I'm the expert, I've dug into it. Very different kind of quality when you call, talk about the opportunistic teacher. In order to be that teacher, the basic thing is that they've got to be allowed or encouraged to study, right? Underneath the surface, it's about investigating. And with the four, it's externalizing to the other. So it's investigating not only some system, body of knowledge, but it's others because it's investigating friendship, the network, in order to discern which one is worthy of one's time, energy, money, attention, investment, so that you can get paid back, rewarded for the attention that you give. This is an opportunist that needs to be able to investigate the other before making a decision, according to Ra. So until that proper level of learning has been established, teaching isn't going to be something that's effective, um, gets the rewards that the person may be expecting or thinking that they're going to get. So the effectivity, effectiveness of this teacher has to come after one has done the research into either the person or whatever it is that they're processing. As a four, if you don't have the right associations, you can end up learning about things that put you in a lot of trouble if you're trying to go into things that maybe are not right for you. It can get into a lot of trouble because now you don't have the right influence and now things just kind of fall, my mind said, through the cracks as in it's not the solid foundation that one was looking for. So not the right friends, not the right networks, not the right people, and it looks like it was going to be an opportunity, but it actually wasn't. So you're learning the lessons hard way. Think the first 30 years, trial and erroring kind of experience. And it's quite common, according to Ra and what he's seen, that they may investigate those things that actually didn't lead them to the kind of influence that, let's say, maybe they dreamed of or expected or thought they were going to have later in life. When you're seeing a first color as a profile pro process in any profile, that first color process teacher, the role of teacher, has to be earned. And in order to earn that, it has to be through the right avenue, venue, network, whatever group or association one has. So an opportunistic teacher is finding the correct relationship that takes them to the correct knowledge. So let's say one is learning human design from somebody who not certified, certified, doesn't matter, doesn't have the capability of learning from that other because maybe the relationship isn't there. The uh, bonding with that other person, maybe they couldn't hear it, whatever the case may be. And so finding the correct relationship as a student of learning the knowledge to the right teacher is everything. This is one of the reasons why um, in human design it's always uh, because it's an acoustic and transmitted knowledge, not only from the voice to raw, but from us who have learned it from raw to others. It's a, a verbal, communicative, communicative um, transmission. 
if this particularly, if you have a lot of sound in your design or not, sensitivity, if this is not attuned to the right frequency with the right other, and that can change, it can change, then you don't get the fullest experience of the knowledge, because we're talking about human design after all, of the experiential realm of the knowledge. And so then you don't have the correct knowledge base in order to become teacher. And so he says, at the same time, you have to see it within the context of the line because the line obviously is going to frame it, meaning this color. And that is something that has to be earned through the relationship. And the correct relationship, again, taking them to the correct knowledge, take them to the place where they can develop that solidarity of their foundation and then be able to begin the process of externalizing once one has found one solid foundation. So then looking underneath, we're looking at a body that is role model, on the path of role model, depending on where they are in their age process and that tripartite life process. And this is a brain system that is oriented towards investigation. It's not like the two that we'll see soon. It's oriented towards digging as well. So again, we're back in that framework of being in the box of a body that's perfectly designed for what the mind wants to do. So then the illusion of being in control of the body is much easier to um, buy into. And that's the danger of thinking that you enjoy the uh, vanity, as well, I would call it, of being able to make decisions with your mind because you're already attuned to what the body is doing just by color resonance nature. So we have a brain system that's oriented towards investigation and the personality, remember, across the board, no matter what your profile is or whatever color it is, this personality is limited by what your brain is giving it. Just like if you got a lobotomy, your personality is not gonna have the same experience of life when a portion of your brain is cut out, right? So when we are dumbed down by not operating in alignment or we lose our cognitive intelligence, then the mind is all skewed, distracted, distorted, um, the process of not self ruling the roost, unfortunately. And then everything's frequency-wise is off. So the right kind of brain here is good at doing research, right kind, I should say, correct, aligned brain, body, functioning in the vehicle is aligned to doing research. There we go. So good at holding information together, good at researching and investigating, good at focusing, good at getting it out too on the personality side because that's what it's designed to do. So it's all it will take is the personality being able to take advantage of the fact that it is fully resonant as a student first then teacher. Yeah, once it's got its solid foundation. The personality being limited by what the brain gives it. Now if we shift over to the color to guru, you now see a brain body system that doesn't have to study. And yet the mind is still wanting to study. The guru has a taste for something very specific that that role model is attuned to in response to recognition of um, the impact of or what it, it has its impact that it is going to give to the world relative to the manifested kind. And so second color design, role model guru are very different kinds of creatures, as you can see, very different. Basically, they're still very primitive diets, rigid diets, but those diets are very different from each other. A role model teacher determination is appetite, meaning one thing at a time. So that also, too, comes to information, one thing at a time. If you see the body, uh, the vehicle, being generative, okay, so the design being generative, and it's a pure sacral response or availability to respond to one thing at a time. In BG5, they say classic builder. In human design, we say um, pure generator then you're looking at somebody who really cannot skip steps and we've got to lay it out for them one step at a time, not just the food, but the information, the people too. So a teacher is one thing at a time. 
How else do we build a foundation? One thing at a time, because a foundation is built one structure, one bro let's say a brick, okay, one brick, and then we have the next bricks that we can put on. Maybe we offset the bricks so it's a little bit stronger, right? But we still have one brick at the bottom. Then we have another brick, and then we have another brick, and we're building that wall, that solid foundation, in order that everything holds together. And in order to get that to that place of trustworthy recognition of the solid foundation, it must be built one brick at a time. And that doesn't happen with the color to guru because it's not necessary for the guru. These, the determination being taste, have an ability to discern their ideal menu. And the guru diet is being able to discern precisely what it is as they're gathering things from the local environment, whatever it is for them that they, that's in season to their taste, that is correct for them. So you can deconstruct that and move it over to what information can do inside one's body vehicle. Is it satisfying? Does it feel sweet and successful and peaceful and surprising? What is it that is right for you? Trust the body, the form, trust the body, the vehicle. Its life will be determined by what is tasteful as you build your role model or evolve to your role model self. On the other side, we're still having a color one teacher. So the different kind of mind, if there's a color two guru on the body side, because remember, the brain body system gives rise to the mind. Ra would give us this analogy of, of the mind being gas of the brain. And when it's not self, it stinks. So if not self, this body vehicle, role model vehicle, not operating in alignment, what can happen then, everything's skewed on the mind side, and we don't have the right kind of externalization of the teaching that's gonna bring forth the opportunities in order for this person to evolve and be seen as a role model. So when he says a different kind of mind, both of these are teacher minds, but from the personality perspective, that underneath that is the body, the brain body system, it's like um, looking at two versions of the same truck, and one's diesel and one's gas. This is just a very different thing as an example, just very different fuels, if you will, because information and food are fuels. So everything about the way that this personality consciousness is going to depend on what this being is taking in, not only at a personal level, a frequency level, an information level, the substance of what is building that brain. And everybody's got a different attunement to sensitivity as far as which orientation one is going to have to taking in life correctly. And that's why we experiment. You, you want the mind to be able to get what it needs from the body, the form. And if people are not in alignment with their decision-making process, strategy and authority, and not further experimenting with dietary regimen according to Ra, then what you get is that we get a dumbed down humanity. But once you're operating in accordance with your vehicle, it's like something shifts. It takes, for me it took some time, but something shifts or unlocks instead of uh, neural shutdown, as an example, as a child, you have neural shutdown approximately around three years of age. Ross says that we who are human should have neural shutdown at seven. So it's almost like, I don't know mechanically if it's possible, but it's almost like you're reorganizing and opening up the brain to make linkages that it wasn't capable of making before in order that the true authentic nature of self can emerge. I love that, merge as oneself. And it takes time, I'll grant you that. However many decades of time that you weren't operating in alignment, it takes some time to clean out the vehicle and come to the nature of being. This vehicle is very rigid. And so what I've noticed in doing my RAVE um, primary health system and radical transformations clinics is that most of the time this body the color one teacher and the color two guru, but especially that color one teacher, have radical shifts within the five week 
uh, program. Just by changing their diet, it can be a radical shift right away because they are so rigid and they've spent so many years attempting to blend or mix foods as an example. So it's how well you treat the body as far as how well the mind is going to show up. And when you train your personality to witness rather than think that it is in charge, you get a much different experience of life. It's my experience or awareness of what I've been witnessing over the years of playing with this. So we look at the color one teacher, the opportunist that is here to teach from the mind process, and we see underneath it that there is this role model body that has a guru brain, which is its natural ability to discern is very honed or attuned. It's very specific, it's very picky, it's very nuanced. Always think picky when you see two anywhere. So the way that this person is going to uh, influence the other as a teacher is very different because they're not going to be one of those teachers that at the body side is going to seem like they know their stuff very well because it, it's a color two, not a one like we saw previously. So in the sense, it's going to be taking a leap of faith from the other to accept their teaching and we know that your influence grows the more other people know, like, and trust you as a four, right? Trust being a repeating pattern of what a six is here to be. So it doesn't mean that your teaching is wrong if you've got a color two guru brain. It just means that it's deeply profound and it doesn't have to be um, substantiated in the same way. Remember, talented. Talented about what is discerning, what is there relative to this selective and closed off role model. So the selective and closed off brain body system is only going to want, let's say, narrow, narrowly um, absorbing or uh, responding or uh, the manifested impacting or reflecting on whatever it is that's taking in from the outside world. The brain-body system, this is where you're nourished by the outside, taking it into one's body, being nourished from the inside out through form differentiation because this is where we have a preference or a predisposition to form differentiation, selective, closed off. So that's always the theme when you're looking at two-ness to wherever it has to be um, showing up. It's a, an ability to suss something out or discern. In looking at this, we're looking at, you don't have to necessarily grasp it in the same way that a one, I'm not digging, I'm not looking, I'm not finding, I'm just being a guru, yeah? That being of, Ra would call the two at the line quality paper tiger, that the potential seems that there's a talent there, but underneath, pressure, it might just fall apart. It might not actually be something that it, it can stand up to the validity. And yet, does it have to? No, because it's as a role model who discerns. So instead of digging, it's just selectively, you could say, picking and choosing from a body standpoint. So how do we know? How do we know if my body's picking and choosing? The body, the brain-body system, just link it over to type. And if you've got your satisfaction, you know you're on the right track. If you've got your frustration, then you know that you're off track or trying to, let's say, be something you're not, whatever the case that your mind thinks that you have to do in order to have, be, or do something different than what you already are. So a fourth opportunist, one teacher, personality consciousness really wants to dig into things and yet the brain does not like to dig into things and it's just going to turn most things off and that's okay. It's okay to allow the body to just, no, mm -mm. Remember when we're taking in life, when we're nourishing ourselves through the interfacing with life, whether it's food or people or information, there is this quality of your consciousness as you're taking it in that you can attune to, or maybe in the process of uh, eliminating at that end, or periodically be available to, or um, the process of concentrated uh, awareness, potentially. Because 
It takes some time to digest life for the most part, but sometimes you can really tell, oh, right at that moment, mm -mm. what to do, it is what it is. Or after some time, you might need some processing time. You might be way more sensitive to things, and after you've processed it, you've eliminated it, like, mm -mm, really not. So this is a brain that doesn't like to dig into things. It's going to turn most things off, and in order to be a teacher, it's limited in what it's going to take in. It's limited in its influence because it's very selective. The teacher backing, it's not. It's a guru backing. And that's a very different experience. Not that one is bad, good, right, or wrong. Remember, this is where, because we don't have resonance between the colors, we're looking at more creativity, more outside of the box kind of experiential process for these four sixes. OK, so now we're moving from these two opportunistic teachers on the mind side, and then either a role model teacher or or role model guru, you're looking at their minds operating differently. And of course, you know you have tones underneath that are going to uh, bring further nuance. If you know that, you can absolutely bring it into your practice. So when you're looking at how they need or want to express, I should say, how they want to express, they have to learn within the guidance system of their body, this vehicle, this life. That teacher brain oriented to digging, that guru brain is not, so doesn't have to dig into anything. It's just about discernment. When I think of the word discernment, I, um, you know how, uh, let's see, at a, okay, so I grew up in Hawaii, and in Hawaii they have um, coffee beans, you know, coffee beans. And if those coffee beans were not uh, dried correctly, either out in the sun or roasted otherwise, um, then you would have to sort through and pick those ones that, eh, no, maybe not, you know? So the, the sorting process, the discerning process, remember, it's unconscious to your conscious personality. You can see the effects of it afterwards. Oh, I didn't want to study that. Oh, I aced my test or not, you know? Whatever the case may be as far as the foundation of the brain-body system, just to know how different that is and to allow for. So we educate the mind to allow for the body's process, whatever it happens to be. That's our job as rave cosmologists, profile purpose function. So Ross says it doesn't come with the certainty that is carried in the teacher-teacher authoritarian resonance when it comes to it too. The way that it is, the way that it works, you know, substantiating when in detail. It has the brain for details, this one. And it loves to get, learn to give the details as a personality, the 4611. You're looking at, <laughs> to say it correctly, the 4.1, 6.1. What you're looking at is those details as an outer authority given to the other how it's going to influence its brothers, sisters, networks, all of that is going to be from the substantiation of the expertise. Again, role model, guru, brain, body system that has its natural ability to pick and choose and discern. So they're not going to have the kind of substantiative detail underneath that capability of unconsciously coming up with all of these mm, aspects of, of how the bricks are laid and what's, what's between the bricks in order that the bricks are solid. So other people having this capability because they're resonant to them perhaps. Remember, we're all resonant creatures. So resonance can allow us to take a leap of faith. Oh, I have hope, I have faith, I have belief in this role model being the guru for me in order that I can take in their influential teaching, okay? It may be a deeply profound process because of that role model taste for certain things that you potentially share, empower, support other people with because they have a similar kind of taste. Now, if we look over at the opportunist with its color to guru mind, now again, we have resonance. And this is a brain that is restrictive in terms of things of what it's going to respond to or recognize or be impacted by or be surprised by in order for it to 
resonate or be stimulated by whatever it is that it's taking in. That's a discernment mechanism. The taste for what's underneath the surface, the mind is exactly the same way. So the guru mind, opportunistic guru, has the ability to see something in the other and gain the opportunities from that, meaning the opportunity comes through its discernment process of what is going on in the other. As we shall see in deeper layers, this is a hope motivated person. So you're looking at somebody who has a sense of whether or not that friend has a kind of um, capability of fulfilling the hope that one uh, knows is there or not. Is it hopeful or is it not when it comes to, remember, this is the correct awareness resonance principle. Again, we have the vanity of the mind because of the resonance on the color level, mind thinking it's in charge and it's in control and it is the decider and so forth. So if they, these people are operating correctly, aligning the vehicle to the geometry that's going to meet the right people who see it as its role model self and then the right influences who see the opportunity of this person being that guru will be able to discern from that opportunity whether or not correct for them. So let me say this in a different way because I recognize it's something very valuable and important. In the attunement of one to one's nature, oneself to one's nature of being, what happens is because of the reorganization of the cellular renewal and the, the formatting, we'll say, of reformatting of the hard drive and the ability to run the software correctly, now the broadcasting of the frequency is cleaner, clearer, less static on the line, more attuned in alignment with where one is in that place in space and however one is able to discern through a concentrated or periodic or um, cyclical process of attunement that attunement to being one's own nature of self resonates and harmonizes. It vibrates on a frequency where other people are going to be able to see that uniqueness or difference in them, however it is that they're designed to be affected or attuned to this being. So it's like when you've got two glasses filled with water and there is a, a harmonic resonance that one person will tap the glass, maybe you um, put water on it and you're rubbing your finger in order to get that harmonic sound, and then the other person, you bring the glass closer, filled water, okay, we're all water, walking water, that person, that water glass coming close and now resonance, vibrational, harmonic, frequency, sound, word, vibrational formulas, that's what we are. So then if we look at this four, six with the with the twos underneath, you're looking at somebody who has just such a capability of, they're not teaching, they're having the ability to not only see the opportunity in the other, but to cultivate that just being themselves. And that's where we talk about having the right people in one's life being so critical and the discernment process of decision, this one, that one, yes, no, or do I stay or do I go, that kind of thing. Very clear that all one has to do, sounds simple, it's not, <laughs> let go of the mind's process of deciding because anytime the mind decides, you have no cognitive access to your differentiated unique self. That's why Ra would say, just follow the body in alignment with your decision making process and really work on getting the body online, the discernment process of one's primary health system or personal health system. And if we move from the opportunist color to guru to role model body into a color three priest, we're now looking again at a determination that is thirst. So this is hot or cold, hot or cold relative to its role model, model self. So this shift into the priest is again a different kind of brain body system one that's gonna be heating up or cooling down, and you're looking at a, a transformer. Remember the three is a transformer. The color three is a transformer. That's what it's doing. So role model transformer, role model priest, through hot or cold, through temperature, through manipulation. That's what threes do on the color level. 
their manipulative or transforming of substance. So this brain system is very, very powerful in its own way, and it can also be uh, kind of rigid in its way in that the brain body system, this role model body, is selfishly looking for those things that can cool it down or heat things up because that's what its discernment process is, cooling down or heating things up. A role model who cools people down or heats people up. So the opportunistic guru really knows how to control other people when there's a brain-body system that is priest because the priest is about control potential. Remember, man manipulative, heating things up, cooling things down. So then we're looking at this um, brain shifting its mm, either receptivity, passivity, right word, its passivity or its activity, right? So we're looking at every single human being having the great good fortune to be a part of this knowledge, being able to recognize this after the fact if it is brought to one's attention. And this is where we step in, by being able to deconstruct what's going on under there, ask informative and intelligent, or you know, make informative statements, or ask informative questions relative to getting this person to be aware of what it's like to be themselves. And that's another reason why resonance helps so much, because you know what it's like physically. Right? You know what it's like to be one of these colors if you are that color after some deconditioning and aligning to one's form with awareness. The personality in this case, again, we have the potential for it to be at a disadvantage, especially if it's not operating in alignment because everything's off. And still we have the potential for creativity, if it's correct, for that person to be engaged in that opportunity to become the role model of self. Now, the opportunistic role model, here we see resonance between line quality and color. So a prophet, opportunistic prophet, that is a role model prophet, again, back in the box, where we're seeing the shift of the brain orientation, again, the brain orientation bringing resonance to the personality in the way that in which it's determined to take in life and externalize its life. We're looking at an interesting, Ross says, obviously very interesting phenomena. The role model prophet's brain is oriented to being influential. It's oriented to being able to dis externalize through its role model capacity to be itself. So we have not only resonance between the colors, but also the conscious line quality. So when it comes to resonance, we always know resonance, uh, if something's resonating, is stronger, isn't it? Dissonance can be nerve jangly, but when resonance is there, it's like, mmm, people learning, learning, leaning in. <laughs> There's this process of the brain body system being able to be attuned to how the mind is here to put its opportunity out into the world. And really, it's, I should say that the other way around, the mind attuned being able to attune to the body, to the vehicle, is the secret to all of this. So being able to express that prophetization kind of quality of a role model within the construct of being an opportunistic prophet as well, such a gift to be able to come across these beings operating in, in intelligence, my mind is saying, in alignment, of course. Not that, yes, everything when you're out of, intel, out of <laughs> alignment, the intelligence and everything being off it is a very challenging thing indeed to experience because when you're more on the resonance vibrational frequency and somebody comes in with their dissonance, it can be quite jangly. It can, um, nerve jangly is how I experience it. So that's one of the reasons why it's so important to teach the right people for you to engage with the right people for you because if your frequency field isn't strong enough to handle the impact of the dissonance coming in, then you get brought down to that level. And what I've noticed over the years is that if I'm in a solid place, then I can 
bring the group up to a different level rather than going down to the, commas, the lowest common denominator, which is what happens in groups and frequency. We're moving now from the opportunistic prophet to the opportunistic messenger, and now we see the frequency shift quite literally to the messenger. And the messenger, we're not looking at the, the personality being changed from underneath because the color is maintaining its, we could say, stability or its fixedness, okay, role model prophet still. But now we have a messenger mind that is its personality is so different from the four that now we have the out of the box thinking, not resonant, and yet still the, the hardest part isn't the design part, it's the mind part. And so when you have something like this, because obviously four and five, very different, yeah? Opportunistic line quality with a five underneath messenger, very different, as well as that role model with that four underneath, very different. So we still have a body color that's resonating to the mind line quality, so that relativity may feel comfortable. But this mind may be uncomfortable with the role model prophet body if one is not living life in accordance with one's decision-making strategy. And so then we have dissonance, literally, lived out in the life, okay? Just like if you can't accept your body is six while your mind is four, it, it has, um, this challenge in the life, it meaning the life experience of this being being this life. So the hard part is the personality part, Ra says, to accept what your body gives you, to what your natural ability, mental ability is, this mind, being able to accept that body. To accept it is not to look, go looking for it. It's not to try and work with it but just to watch it and allow it, experience it at, as it emerges. The body emerging, like from the cocoon, the butterfly or the moth emerging. The mind, this is software as you know, the brain body system being hardware. Um, if you can get it across to your clients, however it is that it's correct for you to do so, that their mind is here to watch the form or the allow the form to live its life and the mind is for outer authority as in the capability of one communing cleanly and clearly in alignment to the right other so we are all here to be potentially pure outer authorities for others if we can just get the mind out of trying to make the decision it's in the thrall of believing that it has the capability of deciding. And yet, when the body is living its life, this is especially true when you've got people who've got um, the authoritative process, whatever the authority happens to be, as an unconscious channel. It's a little bit easier for them to recognize how their body, their, their vehicle comes online and how the form dominates if one can just disassociate enough of the mind's process from making the decision or just watching the mind rather than uh, identifying with the mind. That's one of the recognitions I have that has been really helpful for me in my process. Of course, everybody's unique and different. When you've got a conscious personality like mine with the um, awareness potential of the emotional system on the, on the other side of it, it is a very different experience than the unconscious being the authoritative process. So however it is that you can illustrate, share stories, find research, whatever it is that's going to contribute your awareness of your experience of what it's like for you to watch your body live its life or be what it came here to be. And the release of the tension or the pain or the suffering of believing that there's something wrong with you or other and being able to accept what it is to be this body, this brain body system that has a very specific set of hardware on which the software runs. Then you have this capability of helping them self-realize or self-organize or uh, self, oh, I don't know how to say that, be aware, enlighten, not just N, but in 
enlighten. Enli it's lightening the load of the mind's heaviness of believing the false strategies and narratives of the not-self mind, which is contaminated. The mind is contaminated, regardless of whether you're deconditioned or not. It's always going to have the not-self programs running on it. So while the mind has this program, if the body is the hardware and it is the life and it's running like a smooth, well-oiled machine, and you've got awareness as a personality consciousness witnessing not only the body doing its thing after the fact, because you know, oh, satisfaction or peace or surprise or um, success. You also know uh, how that body is here to be tuned, you know, to attune to the life process. And you get familiar with what your body is versus what the mind experiences, especially when one is with another person. That's really where I'm projector, so I understand that this is probably the only way I can uh, uh, really grasp it. But the moment that I'm with an other, my mind is always processing what's me and what's not me when I'm saying things, when I'm witnessing them saying things, if I know their design. So that's how I've learned to differentiate and witness and watch what comes up in my process with the other. So this particular place, I'm going to... Um, post the whole quote because it's a really big important quote that um, Kacha found for us. He says, software is really interesting, no question about it, but without the hardware, what is it? And the sophistication of the hardware changes the potential of the software. It's the hardware though that it is the story. Whenever you really need to get somebody to understand what human design is, the basis of decision making, you make decisions for, as yourself. The decision has to be rooted in the hardware. So this is where life is. This is what it's all about, and it's something that needs to be deeply grasped. It isn't anywhere else. It's in the body. The moment the body operates correctly, everything in terms of the potential of the being opens up as a possibility. It just does. And it's not like you have to figure it out, how to do this or that with it, how to work with it, how to leverage it. I know a lot of students, uh, especially in BG5, ask me, how do I leverage this? He says, one of the things to understand about the knowledge, or about knowledge, is that the moment you understand how something works, all you need to do is watch it work. You don't need to make it work. It's the magic of informing the mind, educating the personality. That's what we are doing here. Okay.